The ancient feast of Epiphany, which means appearance or manifestation, actually celebrates three events in the life of Christ. The first Epiphany is what we celebrate today. The Word made flesh was acknowledged by the Magi as Lord and King. The second Epiphany, or manifestation of God's power, is at the wedding feast of Cana, where Jesus works his first miracle, turning water into wine. The third Epiphany is at the River Jordan when he is baptized, where the Father and the Holy Spirit, together with Jesus, manifest the divine nature of the one true God. In the early church, the Feast of Epiphany was a time to celebrate the sacrament of baptism. And blessed water from those baptisms was also used to bless the homes of the faithful. It became customary to write over the doorposts of those blessed homes with blessed chalk, the letters C plus M plus B and the year. So CMB is Latin for Christus Mansionem Benedicat, which means Christ blesses this house. And since the three kings were also remembered at this time, someone decided to give the wise men names. And they use the letters CMB as their initials. And that's how we get the names Casper, which means treasurer, Melchior, which means city of the king, and Balthazar, which means Lord, protect the king. The prophet Isaiah predicts that at a time when the world is enveloped in darkness, the glory of the Lord will shine over Jerusalem. This heavenly light, the light of Christ, will be a beacon to all the nations. The psalm proclaims that the kings of Tarshish and the seacoast shall pay him tribute. The kings of Seba and Sheba shall bring him gifts. Before him all kings shall fall prostrate. All nations shall serve him. That was written 700 years before Jesus was born. So sacred scripture confirms the reality of today's gospel that far-off kings will bring gifts to the child Jesus. Isaiah mentions that dromedaries, so camels have two humps, dromedaries have one hump, that they will bring wealth from foreign nations, including frankincense and gold, to the city of the Lord. But Isaiah only mentions two of the gifts, gold, fit for a king, and frankincense for the worship of God. Myrrh, which was used to prepare bodies for burial, tells us that the newborn Lord and King has come to die. Isaiah foretold that the Messiah would redeem God's people through suffering and death in the prophecy of the suffering servant. Thus, all three gifts of the Magi are necessary to convey the true epiphany of who this child is and what he is destined to do. By the grace of the Holy Spirit and from the four corners of the earth, we have all followed the star. Jesus Christ, the dawn from on high. Jesus Christ, the sun that never sets. Jesus Christ, the light that shines in the darkness. We had followed the Lord to a parish in Naples where we offer our gifts, gold, the prosperity and riches of our time, talent, and treasure to build up the kingdom of God here in Florida. Frankincense, our prayers, our hopes, our dreams, our joys, our sorrows, everything we have, and everything we are, rising up to heaven and presented by the angels before the throne of Almighty God. Myrrh, the offering of our lives in sacrifice and service to God and to others. 
to the poor, the outcast, the sick, and the lonely. Let us not become so comfortable with our lives that our ears become deaf to the message of salvation and our hearts become closed to the miracles that God works in our lives every day. We still live in a world of darkness, the darkness of religious persecution, of racial unrest, of the dictatorship of relativism, of the scourge of human trafficking, and the resistance to building a culture of life around the world. My brothers and sisters in Christ, rise up in splendor, for your light has come. Jesus tells us that if we had faith the size of a mustard seed, we can move mountains. Let us be inspired by the faith of the wise men to fulfill in our lives what the Lord commands. Let us be filled with the faith that inspires the Holy Spirit to enliven the Father's love in our hearts. Open the abundant treasury of your lives and generously share your gifts. Be living witnesses of the light of Christ to the world. Last night I went to dinner with a friend of mine, a good friend of mine who lives here in Naples. And I told him last night that I think many of the greatest ideas in human history are in cemeteries. Because people were so afraid to allow that idea that was inspired by God to see the light of day because they were afraid of rejection. They were afraid of failure. They were afraid that people would make fun of them. And what the Magi teach us today is what John writes in his first epistle, 1 John 4, 19. We have to love more than be afraid. So let us praise the Lord with the Magi. May the name of the Lord be blessed and endure like the sun. Every tribe shall be blessed in him. All nations shall bless his name. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who alone works wonders. Ever blessed is his glorious name. Let his glory fill the earth. Amen and amen. Now, just a couple of words about the mission. First of all, I'm grateful to be here because it is cold and rainy in Oregon right now. And so for the next two days, the first talk tomorrow is going to be on staying awake in the woke culture. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to talk about the cancel culture and deplatforming and the so-called redefinition reality, a so-called redefinition of marriage and gender. And what can, it seems overwhelming. It seems like David against Goliath. <laughs> but remember, David won. So we're going to talk about how we can confront the culture with the gospel of Jesus Christ and be witnesses of that love to the world. Then Tuesday, we're going to talk about family life. Because let's be real, Satan is attacking the family. Not just like he did in the Garden of Eden. Not the rocks, not the trees, not the orca whales. He attacked the family. That was his number one target then and his number one target now. He's trying to destroy covenant relation with God. So we'll talk about the, the family in three different parts. First part, we're going to talk about how the holy family can be a witness and example of family life today. Then part two, we're going to talk about the roles of husbands and fathers and mothers and wives. Then we're going to start adoration. And during adoration, we'll talk about the last part. Practical, real world, hands-on things that you can do to upbuild and strengthen your family. And I will also include, which I normally don't include in this talk, I will include your kids who are away from the church, who don't practice their faith, your grandkids aren't baptized. You're saying to yourself, I don't know what happened. They went to Catholic school. They went to Mass every Sunday. They got confirmed because many of our kids are fans of Jesus, not followers. So what can we do about that? How do you even have a conversation with your own child about coming back to church? Oh, we're going to talk about that on Tuesday as well. 
So uh, I just want to finally mention it's great to be uh, with Father Casey again. Uh, we met first at the men's conference. I spoke here several years ago at the men's conference, and then we were on a cruise together last January. We spent a week on a boat. We, I think we ate almost every meal together. You know, it was, it was awesome. And so he invited me to be here. We're going on pilgrimage, the footsteps of St. Paul. So we're going to follow uh, St. Paul's journey, Acts of the Apostles, to Greece and Turkey and many other places. We're going to do a four-day cruise on the Aegean Sea in October of this year. So you can join the dynamic duo. And we're, I tell you, we're better than Batman and Robin, I tell you right now. Pound for pound. Yeah, pound for pound, right? <laughs> Although I lost 85 pounds since the last time I saw you, though. So um, thank you. So I just want to thank you for your kindness and your generosity. I look forward to being with you for the next couple of days. God bless you.